Well, let me ask you real quickly. If you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and secured by the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit wants you to fulfill God's purpose, we're all kind of like his special forces. What happens when sometimes we don't want to do that? Well, look at the next slide. Grieving the Holy Spirit. Uh-oh. Grieving the Holy Spirit. We touched on this a couple days ago. Now I want to dive into it. Because the seventh chapter is so tied to the Holy Spirit coming on these 144,000, sealing them and securing them so that they could do for all of the horrors of the tribulation, all of God's plan is just a reflection of what the Lord does every time someone gets saved. When you got saved, when I got saved, the Lord sealed and secured and began to sanctify us. What harms our sanctification? Well, what verse is on your screen there? Yeah, it's Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Let me get that with you, starting in verse 25. This is a list of things that grieve the spirit that sealed and secures and is sanctifying us. This is vital. This is like how to avoid COVID-19. Well, do you know how to avoid spiritual COVID-19? Verse 25, put away lying. Who's this written to? This is written to the church. Put away lying. It's so easy. We don't want to disappoint anybody and we don't want to get in trouble. And our flesh just always defends itself and doesn't tell the truth. And the Lord says, no, speak truth to your neighbor for we are members of one another. And verse 26, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Now look what the very next verse is. Nor give place to the devil. Wow. Let him who stole steal no more. Rather let him labor. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for edification. Verse 30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed until the day of redemption. Now look at verse 31. Get rid of bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking. Let them be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. How come sometimes they don't feel like getting into the word? Well, that leads us to this question. Are you at the moment, this moment, spirit led or flesh led? Did you know every moment what I'm doing is determined by what is leading me. Either the spirit of God is leading me or my own flesh I was born with and I'm surrounded by is leading me. It's one or the other. We don't, only two choices on the shelf, pleasing God, that's being spirit led or pleasing myself. That's being led by the flesh. How do we know? Look at the chart in front of you. Galatians 5, right here. And if you want to turn there, the Bible says the way you know you're being led by the Spirit is by your attitudes and actions. And Galatians 5 says the attitudes of a Spirit-led person pleasing God are love, joy, peace. What do we call those? The fruit of the what? The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. The actions are we want to eat the Word of God. We want to boldly witness. We're a generous giver. We have personal disciplines like this. Do you want to see one of my disciplines? Now that's my cell phone. What's that? Those are my verses. Those are the verses I'm memorizing. I put a whole chapter taped on the back of my cell phone so that it's always in my pocket. And every time I pull it out, I have to make a choice which side of it I'm going to look at. Catch up with the latest whatever or spiritual disciplines with God. Now, what are the works of the flesh? Look back at your slide. The attitudes of anger, wrath, anxiety, fear, lust, selfishness, irritatedness, bitterness, 
actions of lying and stealing, being immoral, lazy, sarcastic, erratic, restless, self-focused. Those are all evidences that the flesh is running my life. Now, what's the spirit-led life? Look at the next slide. When I'm filled and led and controlled by the spirit, how do I do that? All I have to do is surrender to the one who's already moved inside when he sealed me, the one who's already given me the down payment engagement ring for heaven, and the one who wants to sanctify me. By the way, do you remember what sanctification means? Sanctification is a great big theological term. It's kind of like justification, sanctification, those are big. Sanctification equals usefulness to God. That's what sanctifies. Do you know what the Holy Spirit every day, every hour, every moment wants to do? He wants to sanctify me, which means he wants me more and more useful to God. So when I'm filled by the Holy Spirit, if, uh, if I had a glass here and it was full of water and I wanted to fill it with milk, I would first have to dump the water out to put the milk in. To be filled with the Spirit, I have to be emptied of myself. There's only two choices. Pleasing God, being full of spirit, pleasing self, being filled with myself, my flesh, my ways. These attitudes and, in, and, ad, and emotions are revealed when I surrender to the Holy Spirit. I have peace. I have joy. I have hope. I have love. All of a sudden, I have boldness. Holiness is growing. My passion for Christ. I'm sensitive. I'm self-sacrificing. I hunger for God's word, and I hate sin. So look at the next slide. What does the flesh-led life look like? We just saw the spirit-led life and the attitudes and the actions that come. But what, how do we know when we have started resisting the sanctifying work and we're grieving the Holy Spirit of God? How do we know? Well, when I'm filled, led, and controlled by the flesh, here are the attitudes, actions, and emotions that start showing up. Number one, anxiety fear, selfishness, lethargy. Do you ever kind of feel like you're walking through, you know, some type of resistant mud and it's just like you can't go forward? Lethargy, disinterest in the word. Are there mornings when you wake up that you just rather play a game or watch some video or listen to music or just do nothing? That's a sign of the flesh taking over. Spiritual lethargy, disinterest in the word, no passion for the lost. In fact, you don't even start looking at people as either saved or lost. You just don't care. That's an evidence of the flesh. When we get irritable, I mean, people say, what's wrong with you? What are you so irritable? That's the flesh. That's not the spirit. The Holy Spirit does not make me irritable. The Holy Spirit does not make me bitter or moody or selfish or lethargic. It's the flesh. So here's another way to look at it. The spirit-led life starts with a spirit-led mind. It always starts with the mind. It continues with spirit-ruled emotions, love and joy and peace and gentleness and kindness. Those are kind of like the test. You know how the, you can get a blood test to find out if you have COVID or they, you know, stick that way up into your, your sinus cavity and, and do a little test of, of your, you know, whether you're sick or not. Well, you know what the test is of whether we're spiritually sick? Is love, supernatural love coming out of me? Is joy, is peace, is gentleness, is kindness, is patience, and boldness, and long-suffering? And what happens to my body when my spirit is, is secured and sealed and sanctified? My emotions change, and look what my body does. I deny ungodliness. I avoid sin. I focus on God and I'm serving. But what does the flesh-led life look like? Well, the first thing is, my spirit-quenched mind no longer has the Word of God as, as pressing down, and it's not pushing on all of my thoughts and behaviors. And therefore, I don't have stability. I'm not bold. I have no insights when I see the Bible. I have no hunger for the Lord. I have no joy. I feel aimless. 
I lose confidence and I start feeling kind of empty. And then this whole sheltering at home thing just drives me crazy because I've got to go and do and I feel so restless. Then my flesh driven emotions are volatile. They're lethargic. I quit. I give up. I'm anxious. I'm angry. I'm troubled. I'm distracted. And guess what? Impure. Do you know what Bloomberg, the news service said? That pornography consumption in America is up 202% this morning. How come? Everybody's getting their stimulus checks. And they said they're using their stimulus checks to stimulate their flesh. See, that's a flesh driven emotion. They're impure. And a flesh driven body, look on your slide, is restless, undisciplined, sleeps in, has no time for God, no time for the spiritual disciplines, is appetite driven is lust filled, never satisfied. And the bottom line is defeated by sin. Now, which one describes you? Next slide. See what it says. Our emotions betray what's leading us, the Holy Spirit or our fallen flesh.